Skeets heard a noise and ran over to the window to look out. He saw a light in the sky and watched as it descended to Earth. The light proved to be a small spaceship which hovered for a while over Skeets' back lawn and then slowly landed at the bottom of the garden. Out of the spacecraft popped a little roly-poly green figure followed by a flying fluffy yellow ball. Skeets ran down the garden to meet the strange little man on the fluffy yellow ball, both of whom seemed very friendly. Hello, said Skeets. Who are you? And where have you come from? said the little roly-poly figure, which meant, well, I've come from a great way off to talk to Sidney Keats. Is that your name? Skeets found that he could understand perfectly. Yes, he replied, I'm Sidney Keats, but my friends usually call me Skeets. Skeets is my nickname. May I come inside your house and talk to you, Skeets? asked the little man. I've come a long, long way to see you. Of course, said Skeets. But what do I tell my mum if she sees you? Said the little green man. Don't worry, you're the only one who can see or hear me. No one else. Wow! exclaimed Skeets. Wait till I tell my friends all about you and the way your spaceship landed. Said the little green man. Would you mind if we kept it a secret? Skeets led the little green man and Zoom Zoom up to the house and told him to wait as he thought it best if he opened a window for him. The tubby little man and the fluffy flying ball soon hopped inside and the little man introduced himself to Skeets properly. Shaking hands with Skeets, he said, which meant, in your language, my name means Little Green Man. Oh, this is my pet, Zoom Zoom. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, said Skeets. And you too, Zoom Zoom. I, I think I'll call you Greeny, if you don't mind. Sit down and tell me more about yourself. The little Green Man sat down and explained that he came from the planet Zombazand, which was way out in outer space. It's right up there, he said, pointing up to the sky, and it takes a long, long time to get here. Sitting down again, he went on to tell Skeets that he'd come to Earth to learn about Earth children, the things Earth children do and are interested in. And through my magic powers, I chose you to be my friend. You will help me to learn about Earth, won't you? Zoom Zoom smuggled into Skeets' cheek, as though to try to persuade him. Uh, stop it, Zoom Zoom, cried Skeets with a laugh. You're tickling me. Of course I'll help you, but are you sure no one else will be able to see you both? said the little green man. It's as simple as this. Anyone else sees and hears? Precisely nothing. Wow, cried Skeets. Now isn't that something? But tomorrow when it's light, everyone will see your spaceship. Oh no, they won't, said the little green man, hopping over to the window again. He magically produced two antennae from his head and directed them at the spacecraft. The antennae began to spark and crackle, and a magic ray streaked out across the garden and engulfed the ship. In a few moments, there was nothing to be seen. Wow, said Skeets again. Can you do absolutely anything? Well, I wouldn't say anything, said the little green man, but I can do a great many useful things. Zoom Zoom has a fair bit of magic power too, when he decides to use it. Demonstrating his magic powers, Zoom Zoom made his bottom right quarter disappear, then his top left quarter, and so on. The game went on with parts of the little fluffy fellow disappearing and reappearing, and the show seemed very impressive. Until... Oh dear. Whoops! Where's he gone, our Skeets? Is he all right? Said the little green man. He's a bit of a show off and sometimes gets his magic muddled up. Just hang on a minute and see what happens. Some little popping noises were heard and with a loud pop, 
a rather harassed Zoom Zoom reappeared, smiling an engaging, embarrassed smile, and everyone laughed. Can Zoom Zoom talk? asked Skeets. Uh, no, but he can make himself completely understood, said the little green man. The little green man and Skeets then had a long chat about games and toys and books. They were quickly learning a great deal about each other when they were startled to hear a bell ringing outside. That's not me, said the little green man. I'm not making the bell ring. Oh, I know, cried Skeets, leaping to his feet and crossing to a window. That's a fire engine bell. I wonder where the fire is. What's a fire engine? asked the little green man. Is it important? Haven't you ever seen one? Skeets asked. They save buildings from burning down, and they save lots of lives, too. Come on, let's follow it. They ran down the street and turned a corner to see a blaze of the building in the distance. That's the children's hospital on fire, cried Skeets. And the little green man and Zoom Zoom looked dismayed. Let's go and see if we can give them some help. They ran down the street and stood by the firemen, who were telling reporters how they had rescued some of the children, but then the escape chute had caught fire. They'd sent for another, but they thought it would take a long time to come. In the meanwhile, the fire was getting worse. Can you help them, Greeny? asked Skeets. There are lots of children still inside. The little green man saw a piece of hosepipe on the ground. Said the little green man. Tell them that you will bring something which will help, he said. And while Skeets was passing on his message, the little green man placed the hosepipe on the ground round the corner out of sight. He produced his antennae from which rays went out directly to the hosepipe and it began to grow. It grew and grew until it was big enough for even the biggest child to slide through it. Hurry up, Skeets! And take this to them, called the little green man. Skeets hauled the huge hose round the corner, and when the farmer saw it, they ran to help pull it up to the building. Climbing up the ladders, they soon had it fixed into position, and one by one, the children slid down inside it to safety. <coughs> children were delighted, farmer were delighted, and Skeets and his two friends were delighted too. When the children were out of the building, the fireman tackled the blaze and soon had it under control. Before long, the fire was completely out. The children had been taken away a few at a time to other hospitals, and the little green man and Zoom Zoom had been fascinated by the whole thing. When no one was looking, the little green man took away the huge hose and returned it to its normal size. He then ran round the corner to join Skeets and see the fire engine again when, oh dear, he tripped and landed on his nose just as the firemen were carrying away their ladders. And they couldn't see him, of course. He stood up quickly and his head got stuck in the rungs of the ladder. The fireman placed the ladder against the fire engine and the little green man wriggled to try and free himself. He managed to wedge one foot in an empty bucket and the other in a fireman's helmet and neither would come off. Skeets and Zoom Zoom ran to the rescue and they soon freed the unhappy little green man. Skeets and Zoom Zoom smiled. Poor old greeny. It looks like you're the only one to get hurt in this fire. The little green man turned. He said, Well, really?